Shane McGuigan here again with BBB. Thank you very much, Shane. Appreciate we rushed a little bit for time, but uh, always nice picking here. How was it going in the gym? First question. Yeah, good, good. Everything's done now, so just looking forward to uh, Saturday night, mate. You know what I mean? It's going to be a good, tough fight for us. Good ask, but uh, really what well now. What specifically do you think is going to make it tough? About Ryan Martin. He's a good, good all round fighter. Jimmy's mean, had to come up the hard way in America. So, um, he hasn't boxed anyone of real merit, but you, your first 10 fights in America are a lot tougher than your first 10 fights over here. So, I think you know, he wouldn't have got to this position if he wasn't a, a great operator. Round of it. Taylor's speed is going to really affect him. And also the punching power, because he's got the speed of a featherweight, but he punches extremely hard. So, that's what always shocked me for early on. And, uh, but I, I see it being a distance fight. I see it uh, being quite tricky, um, quite, quite cagey fight at, at times. And then, um, yeah, sort of you going full distance. And um, from like your point of view, obviously you team to, I can just see Josh in the background there. Yeah. Like, how easy a decision was it to enter the Super Series? I know you've obviously got a bit of experience with that as a trainer anyway. Oh, it's a no-brainer for us. I mean, it's a great, it's a great, uh, great event to be a part of. Good money in it, but also just great exposure. There's two belts coming in. Um, no, that's nice. Wait for Craig showing up. Yeah, you, you, know, you can come out this tournament in 12 months time with two belts. And he only, he only had 30 fighters entering it, so you can come out with 16 fighters. I couldn't believe that. So we did a little quiz. On, we did a little quiz on our website. Like all, see if we can name Josh Taylor's opponent. I couldn't believe he's only had 13 fights. He seems to have been mixing it at a very high level for so long. So, yeah, great experience in the amateurs. So he was ready to get pushed on quick, and that's the way. You know, he turned pro quite late, so we had to get a movement fast. But and he was more than capable of doing so. And that's uh, that's why we're in a position we are today. Oh yeah, by all means. Like, he's never looked out. Place in any of the fights he's had, even like Victor Postel and his 12 fight, 13 fight. Ridiculous. First time he's going to distance in our last one in terms of 12 rounds. It's a great, great little experience for him to get. And he, he finished day. well as well. It wasn't, you know. Yeah, phenomenal engine. And uh, but it's just giving him that confidence now moving into this tournament. Three fights in a short period of time. That seems to be like a little sort of trend of your gym, really pushing the fighters on and none of this sort of letting it marinate. And obviously, um, was it oh, yeah, like Lee McGregor out last time as well. Yeah, five, five fights. a really good little fighter. He's, yeah. But I'll, I'll keep I'll keep Lee back because you know he is actually a, only a baby like he's only 21. So I want to keep him at the British um, Commonwealth European level because the, the gap between European uh, the European champion and world champions like the likes of Burnett and um, all the other top guys up here like Inoue has done a huge goal for the So with someone like Lee, I'll, I'll keep him back. But Josh is ready to go. And another one you've got ready to go would be Luke Campbell. Bit of a surprise move that one. Um, obviously yeah. him working with Matchroom. Is that any problems you foresee there working with Eddie? Or? No, not at all. Listen, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just it's business. You know what I mean? I've worked with Eddie before and we've had our differences. And a lot of the time, he's not really as close to the fighters. Well. <laughs> he's had his differences with him. And, and, and I'm, I'm not currently working with Carl anymore. So it's business. You can't take things to heart. And you just got to get on with it. And he's the number one guy in the, in the whole entire world at promoting the moment. And, uh, got me even on Monday, so that's, that's the way it goes. Would love to be a fly on the wall in there, but yeah. yeah Thank you very much. It's a little bit of needle still, but we. As you say, it's business, though, isn't it? It's, it it's got to it's gotta be what's best for the boxers yeah, at the end of the day. Listen, I'm not going to give away my boxers uh, fulfilling their dreams and like, making ourselves a good living. So that's the right path to go. That's where we go. And now, um, just one more quick one. Talking about boxers fulfilling their dreams. Uh, George Groves, unfortunately, didn't have that fairy tale ending, but, but he still fulfilled his dreams. He still became the world champion. You know what I mean? He's still uh, he's done phenomenal in his career. He's having a little break right now. He's out in. Um, He's out on holiday, so uh, him and his wife and his two kids are uh, having a well, well earned rest. And uh, yeah, we uh, just, you know, just under, you know, George is just taking some time out, but a bit of a bit of a sickness, you know what I mean? A bit of a sickness, don't get me wrong. We, we trained really hard for that, we pushed ourselves on, we tried to rehab that shoulder real fast. Did listen, he, he, was in, he was in great shape, you know. Uh, Camp could have obviously gone a little bit better, but Camp never goes great. And um, you know, he, but he, he, was, he was in a good place. I wouldn't have let him, I wouldn't have let him into that ring if I didn't believe he could win. Unfortunately, we didn't get the victory. Gallagher was really clever. Gallagher had a good, good fucking game. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just a good, good fight to be part of. But unfortunately, he didn't go away. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate.